What is up everyone and welcome back. We are going to be talking about the benefits of L-carnitine and specifically I was asked about injectable L-carnitine. So if you guys are asking me questions, I will probably be doing a video or a post to help everyone out there, not just you. I like to help as many people out that I can and that's why I have started this channel to begin with. So let's jump into it. What was I asked about, asked about injectable L-carnitine versus oral L-carnitine. What are some of the differences between the two? Why you might, why injectable might be preferred over oral. And then we're also going to be talking about some of the other benefits that aren't quite talked about with L-carnitine. So let's jump into this. L-carnitine is responsible for fat mobilization within the cells, but there are some other benefits that we also don't really talk about too frequently such as people that are enhanced that may have left ventricular hypertrophy come into play. We have studies now that back that L-carnitine can prevent or aid in prevention of left ventricular hypertrophy, which is basically recombination of the heart or enlargement of the heart and the left ventricle is where we see it in, especially with people who are using things like PEDs. So that is one of the major benefits. Another major benefit is if you're cutting down or even off season, it helps one I've noticed personally with endurance levels. And why is this? Because it helps to mobilize fat within the cells. Therefore, we're more efficient at one, mobilizing the fat, potentially increasing how much fat we can burn as well, burn due to the fact that we are mobilizing it better. I personally notice a better sense of well being when I'm on it and a few other benefits, such as sometimes even before sex, L-carnitine could be beneficial. Yeah, as crazy as it is, it does actually aid in bed, something that people don't really talk about. Another benefit behind L-carnitine that we don't really talk about is the fact that it helps testosterone bind to androgen receptors. It makes the androgen receptors more sensitive. Why is this good for someone that's potentially on TRT? You get better bang for your buck. So you're able to upregulate those androgen receptors, allowing you to mobilize the testosterone and to utilize that testosterone because now your androgen receptors are more sensitive. One huge benefit for us, especially if you're enhanced. Now, something that is not talked about when it comes to L-carnitine is how hard it is to mobilize L-carnitine. L-carnitine needs insulin to shuttle and to be utilized by the cells if you're taking it as a supplement. So pairing L-carnitine, and I'm not advising this, with insulin is almost needed because you have to get to, in studies from what I remember off the top of my head, usually these videos, I do not look at studies and quote studies right off, they're off the top of my head from when I read the studies, is 90 nanogram per deciliter, I believe, is the range that they used to get up there. Now, for frame of reference, everyone is going to be different depending on how insulin sensitive you are. Can you get up there by eating carbohydrates? Absolutely, but if you're in a caloric deficit, you best believe it is hard to get up to that threshold because 20 grams I have seen in lab work raise it to around the 20 marker. So it was like a, almost like a one-to-one -one ratio. So you're talking about potentially having to ingest and everyone's, again, let me restate this. Everyone is going to be very bio-individual. To get up to 90, if that math was like a one-to-one -one ratio, you would be looking at potentially having to get up to 90 grams of carbohydrates to hopefully release enough insulin for you to mobilize that L-carnitine to get it into the cells to take action of what it needs to do. So I did just want to talk about that very briefly to make sure potentially you're not throwing money down the tubes, but there are still those benefits of L-carnitine, even if you're not utilizing it with insulin per se, but I would definitely pair it with carbohydrates nonetheless to get that insulin release. Next thing, oral versus injectable. Which one is better? And why was I asked about injectable in particular? So I'm one, I'm glad I was asked about injectable in particular. And the reason being is oral has a garbage yield ratio. 
let me restate this again because I don't usually say negative words like this, but a garbage yield ratio. I have seen people try to argue the fact that, oh, this L-carnitine in particular has a 30% yield ratio, yada, yada, yada. One, keep in mind, you still need to utilize a pancreatic response of insulin to drive that L-carnitine. That's one thing. Another thing, the most that I've seen in studies personally, and there may be some other studies out there floating around, that I've seen of a yield ratio is a 5% yield ratio. The most in studies that I have seen able, someone able to ingest actually and actually be able to break down orally is 3,000 milligrams. So if you run the numbers on it, then you're looking at 150 milligrams for, per oral use and optimally, depending on your body weight, which is depending on dosages of how you much you need in a day, a 200 pound male approximately needs around 200 milligrams per 50 pounds. So you're looking at 800 milligrams. Also that threshold is about 9,000 milligrams per day that you can ingest orally. Again, this is what I've seen in studies. So that being said is you're looking at a total of 450 milligrams in that day. That's not optimal. Will you see benefits? Absolutely. We'll see benefits. One other thing about oral L-carnitine that does not get talked about frequently, and there's a good reason why it doesn't get talked about frequently, is potential links to cancer. And in rat studies, we have seen this happen with only oral L-carnitine, not injectable. So I'm going to jump into injectable now. Why is injectable the preferred method? Kind of just touched on it with the oral. The bioavailability of it, because the bioavailability, if you inject 500 milligrams of L-carnitine, you get 500 milligrams of L-carnitine. So essentially the downside to injectable L-carnitine is having to one, inject yourself with L-carnitine, which to be honest, in my relative experience, some hurts, some does not. It depends on the source of where you're getting it from. Uh, 200 milligrams per milliliter tends to not hurt, but then you're talking about if someone at 200 plus pounds like myself, needing 800 milligrams of L-carnitine a day, then you're talking about potentially putting in four milliliters a day, which if you wanna talk about uh, injection fatigue, it is an actual thing. They have studies on injection fatigue in particular, which is directly linked to how adherent you are with the protocol. If you're having to inject two times a day, two milliliters per time that you inject, you're probably not going to be as adherent to it. So I have seen dosages, at least from an HRT clinic where I get it, 500 milligrams per milliliter, and you're talking about doing one milliliter in a day. Now that's not 800 milligrams, you can go up from there, but I really don't care to inject myself as frequently as even one time a day anyways. So I suck it up and I do it once a day. I use a little baby insulin needle when I do it, and that's how I personally do it. I don't get post-pain injection with the one from HRT, my HRT clinic, but I have gotten post-pain injection from other sources. And the post-pain injection is definitely noticeable. So I'm not trying to deter you from that. Just note that there are <laughs> quality sourcing issues from where you get it from. And I mean, that's pretty much anything. That's why I always recommend if you can get it from a compounding pharmacy where you know it's being compounding within an FDA facility, one, it's illegal, and two, the quality tends to be better because it's under FDA guidelines and regulations to make sure that it's one, 100% dosed properly, and two, created equally across the board. Now, I wanna just recap on L-carnitine, oral versus injectable, why one is better versus the other, and potential of the cancerous downsides to oral, which I don't think is really talked about much. Now. Again, there's not a ton of research on this in human practice. It's just the rat studies that we have, but we don't really know. So I am definitely going to be doing an injection, especially due to the cancer downsides to that. TMAO, potentially. That does not mean that it's 100% like you're gonna get cancer. Um, another reason for the linkage between red meat and cancer is actually L-carnitine that we see in the rat studies. So how long can you take L-carnitine for? Me personally, this is a supplement that I recommend taking year round because left ventricle hypertrophy, potential fat oxidation, fat mobilization, benefits behind it. You stay leaner year round. You can stay more insulin sensitive year round. 
it improves, especially for you guys out there that are on hormone replacement therapy or TRT, it helps to just benefit everything. There's no real downsides to L-carnitine. Now, if you're taking massive amounts of L-carnitine, there are downsides to it. So I just want to throw that out there that fall in line with the dosing of 200 milligrams per 50 pounds of body weight, I think is important. But again, I do take the supplement year round. I think it's extremely beneficial. I have felt better on it. It makes me feel better knowing that I'm also protecting my heart and there's no real downsides to it. Now, the downsides, I guess, would be the fact that you have to, if you're doing injection, you have to inject it. And then the other downside to this would be the fact that there is financial obligations involved behind it. So how much are we talking? From an HRT clinic and a compounding pharmacy, you're probably looking between $100 to $200 for about a month and a half worth or so. If you're getting this from a website, then you're probably looking at a month to two month supply for not too much of a difference. It's probably gonna be right around like $80 to $100 a month approximately. So in retrospect, I recommend finding a compound pharmacy and an HRT clinic that can prescribe it to you or even a doctor that can prescribe it to you that's willing to write you a script so you can go directly to a compounding pharmacy to save yourself the time and you know that you're not going to be injecting something that you don't know what it is or that it's going to be really painful. Like I said, the online stuff that I've ordered personally, most of it is not equivalent to the compounding pharmacy. It hurts more and either it has to be really underdosed kind of thing and you have to do more of it and I just don't like dealing with that personally. So I get it from a compounding pharmacy. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope that the dosaging helped you. And again, I'm not trying to deter you from doing oral or going to injectable because not everyone wants to inject daily. You're still going to see benefits out of the orals. Just make sure to pair with carbohydrates. Uh, it is definitely beneficial before endurance level activities such as cardio, running, swimming, sex, you name it. It's all endurance. I hope you guys found this video helpful. We'll see you on the next one. And if you like this video, make sure to comment on some content or if you have questions, comment down below. I'm more than happy to create a video on it to help others out there. Catch y'all soon.